Craig. Given the surprise sacking of Roberto Mancini, you must be shocked to be appointed as manager of the national team. Well, that just surprise is a bit of an understatement. You know, 15 minutes ago, I was filling up the vendor down the hall, and now here I am, sat in charge of the Italy national team. Do you think your lack of experience is a concern? Just a little bit, yeah. You know, there's a lot of disappointed players, I'm sure, that I've took over. Are you confident in your team selection? Well... I've got it on this bit of paper here, so yeah, I've got some names, we'll see how we get on. Good luck, Craig. You're going to need it. Oh, thank you very much. Now then guys, how are you doing? My name's Craig and thank you for joining me. So I'm one half of Now Then Corey. Hopefully you've seen some of my content before, predominantly FM21 stuff, all about it. Absolutely love it. But this time out, we're going to give the Euro 2021s a go. Why not? Let's let's have a go. We've gone with Italy. As you know, everybody's going with England. They're bringing it home. And I've got a little bit of Italian heritage, so it, it seems good to give it a go. Why not? You know, as what's the worst that can happen. So today's episode is all about the team selection as we have a look at the, the 26-man team that I've picked. And then we'll talk through what the plan is for the rest of the episodes. Hopefully there's a few of them. We don't go out at the group stage, you know, anything that could happen. I've never done the international management scene before. So yes, trying to select the pool was difficult enough. So if that's anything to go by, you've oh got in for a right treat. Right, so here we go then, guys. We're on the team selection screen. Now, this is obviously the inbox. We can have a look and see that the three goalkeepers that I have selected. So, goalkeeper-wise, we've got Alessio Crag now. He's obviously third choice. Not being capped by Italy yet, but as far as stats went, I thought he's a decent player. Now, we did have people like Sirigu, Perrin, but I went with Crag. Now, like I say, third choice goalkeeper. We're just taking him for backup on backup, really. Alex Meret will be the number two, so he's been capped three times before. Decent, you know, goalkeeping-wise. Is he going to set the world alight? No. Is he better than Donnarumma? Absolutely not, obviously. But second-best goalkeeper that I've got, so therefore you choose him. And then, like I've just said, the undisputed number one, Gianluigi Donnarumma. What a player. 22-year-old, 23 caps for it already. When you look at his ability... Absolutely incredible, and on this he's still at Milan. Now, this is one thing to remember. You may see some players selected that don't actually play for the teams that they should be. I have simulated the season, so some of the players have moved to other clubs, but the majority of the players looking at it are where they should be. So in defence, then, we've got Alessandro Bastoni. He's playing as a centre-back. You know, Hedden, Mark and Tacklin, all very good. A caps for Italy already. Current ability four star, potential ability four and a half star. Twenty two year old. We've got we've got some very young players in here. I have chosen some youth in. We have got some experienced heads, and we have got a couple of players that have only been capped a couple of times, or could potentially be winning their first caps in this competition. But yeah, Bastoni, he's coming in as a centre back. Benucci, obviously a right figure out there. One hundred and three caps for Italy already. One of the older players in there at 34 year old still has loads about him though. He's not the quickest, but his pace 14 for somebody at 34 isn't bad going at all. Head and mark and tackling all still there. Current ability four star. Yeah, you know, first name on the team sheet as far as I'm concerned. Him and Donnarumma every game. Alessio Ramagnoli, another player making it in. 14 caps, two goals for Italy already. 26 year old, six foot one centre back. Doesn't exactly set the world alight, this guy, but again, defensively. He's got a decent bit of pace. Head and mark and tackling again, you know, 15, 16, 14, all up there. I think centre-backs wise, you know, Italy have always been renowned for the centre-backs and we've got some very good ones this time round. And we've got one more central defender coming in, Gianluca Mancini coming in. 25-year-old, five caps, currently at Roma, three-star current ability. Again, you know, when I look at the stats that I want, he's decent enough. He's fast enough at the back as well. Out on the right-hand side, we've got David Calabria. Not a player I've heard of, if I'm completely honest. Three star again. Playing out on that right-hand side. Can potentially play as a wing-back as well. But I think for me, we're going to play with a flat-back four. That's the way I want to set up. And we'll build on that. We may, further on into the competition, get a bit more expansive. But yeah, Calabria is going to play out on that right-hand side. Alessandro Florenzi, also a player that's going to back him up. 
Cap 36 times already, 30 year old, free star again. Pace wise and acceleration can do the business. Crossing and dribbling also quite good, should be wanting to attack on that right hand side. And another player on that side, Manuel Lazari. So 27 year old, only being capped three times, brought him in. You know, he can play defensively and in that midfield position should be wanted. Crossing and dribbling, 16-15. The pace and the acceleration can cause all kinds of troubles. Now, defensively, is he great? Not really. Tackling 10, marking 11. But, you know, if we want to really push on and be offensive, he's the man. But now on the left-hand side, we've got Leonardo Spinazzola. What a player. Again, you know, he's got the attributes that we need. He's got acceleration, he's got pace, he's got dribbling, he's got crossing. Again, marking wise only 10, tackling wise 11. Defensively, you know, for very offensive, my defensive players. But yeah, Spinazzola, the man that we're picking. And then finally on that left-hand side, we've got Emerson. He's coming in. He's more of a well-rounded player. Currently two and a half star, potential ability three star. He's now a Porto, 10.5 million, 14 games he played for them. And yeah, he's a decent player, 27-year-old, nine caps. In the midfield, then we've gone with Nicolo Barella. He can play right in that central midfield. So for me, I'm probably going to play with an anchor defensively to start with. Italy teams are all about their defensive solidity and then we work on that attack and flair afterwards. But what a player this guy is. 24-year-old, 19 caps, 4 goals, 4-star ability, playing to his full potential. He's not the biggest at 5 foot 8, but like those stats, like he is going to pull all the strings. Him and this guy... So Verratti, another one. I could basically play a 4-4-2 with the amount of talent that we've got, but Verratti doesn't really need any introduction. 44 caps, 4 goals, 28-year-old, a player in his prime. You know, that is it. What more do you need to say about Verratti? But a player on the rise, we've got Emmanuel Locatelli. Now, he's an elite midfielder, worldwide reputation, current ability 3-star, potential ability 4-star. Now, he is going to sit in as the anchor. Now, we've got a couple of players that can sit in there and do that. He is certainly one of them. Eight caps, one goal, passing 16, tackling 15. He is a well-rounded player. Currently in this world, he's wanted by Manchester United and Barcelona. Kind of tells you what player he is and what talent he is. Another player coming in with absolutely mental stats is Lorenzo Pellegrini. 24-year-old, capped 20 times with two goals. Corners crossing, you know, likes a set piece and that's where we're at. Not the greatest on free kicks, that's something we'll have to work on. And find a better player to do that, but all-round Pellegrini incredible player six foot one tall in the midfield sensi another one and he's a player that can play in all three positions should we decide to drop that anchor in behind the strikers he's a player that can play there now decision making 16 flair 16 teamwork 16 passing 16 what a player 11 caps 25 year old current ability three star potential ability four star now out on the wide areas we've got nicolo zaniolo now he's a player that can play anywhere in the midfield, if I'm completely honest. 21 year old, five caps, two goals. Very, very good player when you look at there. Finishing 16, composure 15, technique 16, off the ball 16, current ability three star, potential ability four and a half star. Now, he may not start every game, but he is versatile and can play anywhere, like I say, across the midfield three, can play behind the strikers as well. Lorenzo Insigne, now he could potentially be a striker for us if that's the way we wanted to play. Now I'm going to play with him out on that left-hand side there. I think that is the way to go. We, we may push players forward. Like I say, I'm probably going to go with a flat free midfield. A 4-1-3-2 is probably the way I'm going to go. They've got the place to do that. But Insigne, 42 caps, 11 goals, 29 years old, currently playing to his full potential. Four stars, got acceleration, got the pace, first touch, passing. Could be better on his long shots, if I'm completely honest, but he's crossing his dribble and he can do that as well. El Shahari is a player, he's been about forever. He's another one, hasn't he? It seems like he's been around forever. Probably peaked too early. 26 caps, four goals, 28 years old. Again, he's versatile, can play out on both sides. He's suited to that left-hand side. Crossing and dribbling, not the greatest, but he could provide a bit of magic. He really could. I just hope he's as good as he used to be. You know, he was OP in other games. He was always going to be a wonder kid. But at 28 years old now, as his time passed, and I've taken a bit of a punt on this one. Chiesa coming in. Again, a player that can play out on both sides. We've got a really, really good team. They've got a better team than I thought. Obviously, pool-wise, they've had players to choose from. Obviously, there's players like Tenali haven't made it. Up front, they had loads of options. But yeah, we're going with Chiesa. Again, offensively fantastic. He's going to scare defences. Acceleration and pace, he can do the business. 25 caps already, only 23-year-old. Current ability 4-star, potential ability 4-star. 
a real talent. And then lastly, Domenico Baradi. Now, a very good player. Again, a player that could potentially play up top. I don't think that's the way to go. I'm more looking at him playing in that attacking midfield role behind the strikers. Should we get further on into the competition and be really settled and be able to push you? So that is what we're going with. Baradi dropping in behind the strikers. And then as far as the strikers go, I've selected four. So Moise Keane is the first striker that I've picked. Current ability three star, potential ability four and a half star. 21 year old, six caps, three goals. Acceleration wise, he's going to scare defences if we start to play the ball over the top. Finishing and composure isn't great. Balance 15 is on the rise, but Moise Keane, he's someone that's going to come on further down the line when the opposition is tired and hopefully get some late goals. Andrea Bellotti, 31 caps already, 27-year-old. You know, he's not the greatest striker, I'm going to say, but he scores goals. Maybe not at international level with 31 caps, 10 goals, but Bellotti's going to come in. can play as the pressing forward, the advance forward. Also as the target man, should we need to play that. And another player that I've brought in just really to be that target man is Andre Patania. Now, he's a player that, you know, I would imagine if, if I was to talk to another 50 managers who had taken over the Italy squad, Patania would not have made it. He's only been capped once, but I like him. I've played him in other saves. I've played him in other teams. And for me, he can hold up the ball very well. Is he a natural finisher? No. Can he do the business with holding up the ball, coming back, collecting it, being part of the link-up? Yes. So Andre Patania gets in for that. And then lastly, Ciro Immobile. Now, look at them stats. He's absolutely incredible. What a player. 31-year-old. Yes, he's in his prime years now. Potential ability, four-star. In the league, obviously his league campaign, he played 28 games for that. So he scored 21 goals. So this is a guy that is banging form. If he isn't scoring goals for us, then, you know, I don't know how far we're going to get. We have got players that can cause problems. Obviously, the, the amount of attacking players we've got behind, creative players. But Immobile is going to be the one that is basically going to get us out of trouble. I would imagine further down the line when he gets the squeaky bum time. So tactically then, how are we setting up? Now, this is obviously isn't a selected squad, but we are going to set up with the Anchorman formation. This is a formation I've used quite a while, and it's probably my most sound formation to start with. It's a good defensive base to build on. So, you know, we'd be going with Don Room, a sweeper-keeper, two wing-backs with Spinazzola and Florenzi, two ball-playing midfielders, this time Bastoni and Bonucci. With then a regista, if it is the right this time, somebody that is going to link up the play. We've got Chiesa, Barella, and Lazari. So Barella is just going to play as a standard centre midfielder with two wingers in Lazari and Chiesa. Then we've got an advanced forward in Immobile and a deep line forward in Insignia that's going to come and collect the ball. Now for me, if I was going to play it anyway, I'd probably go with Patania up front. There we go. And then set it like that. That's how I would play it. We have got other tactics obviously that we could use. I've got the Libero tactic. You know, that is an Italian tactic if there ever was one. We could go with that. And then finally, we will go with the 4-2-4 should we really want to blow teams away further down the line. So yeah, that's how we're set up then, guys. As far as the schedule goes, this is genuinely set up the correct way. The link to the European Championships is down below and it's got the correct fixtures, the correct dates, the lot. Obviously, the team selection, which is on the 23rd of May, is the bit that obviously where you'd want to start and get cracking. So there you go then, guys. This is it. So in tomorrow's episode, we'll have games against Turkey, Switzerland and Wales. Three big games coming up as we try to get out of the group stages. So thank you very much for watching. As always, it's been emotional. If you have enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. It would mean a lot as we continue to grow the channel. But yeah, stay safe and I'll catch you later. Ta-ra.